Hi, I'm Megan and welcome to my kitchen. In today's What's for Dinner video, I'll be sharing with you what meals we had this past week. Our dinners were easy to make, budget friendly, and delicious. So if you're looking for some weeknight meal ideas for your family, just keep watching. For dinner this first night, I had eggplant parmesan on the menu, but when it came time to make dinner, honestly, I just wasn't feeling it. You know, you have to like salt the eggplant, let it sit, pat it dry, bread it, fry it, put it in the oven, all that jazz. And I was like, no, don't feel like doing that, but I still wanted to use up the eggplant. So I went on Pinterest and kept coming across a dish called Pasta alla Norma. This is an Italian, specifically, I believe, Sicilian dish. Um, now, this isn't completely traditional. This is kind of my take, and I took different things from different recipes that I saw. So I didn't really follow one exact recipe. I'll try to find a recipe closest to what I did and put it in the description box below for you. But let me show you what I did. This was delicious. This was so good. All right, first up for the eggplant, I removed most of the peel and then I am just going to chop the eggplant into dices. Now, I know with eggplant, there's kind of like a hot debate whether you salt it or not. When I make eggplant parmesan, I always salt it, um, but I didn't do it this time because I've, I figured between cutting it into smaller pieces and roasting it, it wouldn't need it. And many of the recipes that I saw said the same thing. So I didn't salt it tonight and it turned out just fine. But if you want to salt your eggplant, salt your eggplant. So to the eggplant, I've got it diced in this bowl. I'm going to add some olive oil, season it up with some salt, pepper, onion powder, garlic powder, some oregano. You can use whatever seasonings you'd like. And I just eyeballed the seasonings just to, to taste. Once I've got my seasonings added, I am going to give that a good stir and then um, we'll be ready to roast this up. Now you can totally do this in the oven. I didn't feel like turning on the oven though this night, so I did it in the air fryer. I roasted it at 390 degrees for maybe about 15 minutes or so just until it was tender and golden brown. All right, in this pot, and I just boiled my pasta in this pot, drained it, and it, the pasta is setting to the side in the colander, so that's kind of why the pot looks dirty, but it, it's clean. It's fine. To this pot, I've got it on about medium-low heat. I'm going to add in some olive oil and finely diced onion. I'm going to sprinkle that with salt and then add a little pepper, and then I'm going to allow that to cook until the onions start to become soft. That took, I don't know, maybe about three to five minutes or so. Next, I'm gonna add some minced garlic. This is just the stuff from the jar. And then once I've added that, I'm gonna add in a, just a little bit of anchovy paste, not a lot, just maybe a teaspoon or so. You totally don't have to add this. A couple of the recipes that I saw said to add this. And if you don't like um, fish, don't worry about it. It doesn't taste fishy at all. It just adds like a nice savory um, flavor to the, the sauce. So once I've done that, I'm gonna add in a jar of pasta sauce. You can use your favorite. You can also just use some canned uh, crushed tomatoes, but I need to work through this. And I did take a little of the reserved pasta water and add that to the jar, gave it a shake and added that to the sauce. So once I have added that, I'm going to add just a little bit of this basil paste. I've just got it on hand trying to work through it. I'm gonna give that a stir and then simmer that for about 10 minutes or so. So after about 10 minutes, I'm going to add in that roasted eggplant. And you could probably add the eggplant in at the beginning and not let it simmer the first 10 minutes. But I was kind of afraid that if I let it simmer too long, the eggplant would fall apart. Once I've added the eggplant and stirred that in, I'm going to add in some fresh chopped basil. Give that a stir. And then I'm going to let that simmer for another 10 minutes. So I simmered it for about 20 minutes in total. And I just added the lid just so it didn't splatter all over the kitchen. At this point, give your sauce a taste, adjust the seasonings to your taste. Off camera, I added just a tiny little pinch of sugar. I know that's very controversial, but if you wanna add sugar to your pasta sauce, add it. If you don't, don't, you're in your kitchen. So what I've done is I added my cooked penne pasta that I cooked earlier, cooked it just according to the package instructions and some salted water. Now, here's where I said it's not very, I, I kinda went off tradition. 
according to everything that I read, Parmigiano Reggiano is like the traditional cheese to use here. I didn't have any on hand because remember, I just kind of decided to make this last minute. So I had some shredded mozzarella and a little bit of fresh mozzarella cheese. So that's what I'm going to add. Um, so I just stirred the shredded mozzarella in and then tour the fresh mozzarella on top, place the lid on this, and I just allow it to sit um, to allow that cheese to melt. So here's what it looked like when it was done. I added some more chopped basil on top. And next I'll show you the side I'm going to serve with this. So I've mentioned this before on my channel, but there is a chain pizza restaurant called Boom Boss, and they have, I think they call it like their house salad and it is delicious. I love to try to recreate it at home. It's really simple. Here's what I'm going to use to make it. I've got some baby arugula and spinach, some cranberries, honey roasted pecans and then for the dressing i'm using this honey balsamic and then i've got some leftover honey goat cheese so all i'm going to do is lay down the greens crumble some of the goat cheese over it add my pecans and cranberries drizzle that balsamic over it and this salad it's simple but it's delicious so good all right here are the plates so we've got some of the pasta and the salad and this dinner was so good we really enjoyed that pasta For dinner this next night, I made BLTs. I was just going to serve chips with this, but I was digging around in my fridge that day and I had a few things on hand that really needed to be used up. So I decided to make like a taco pasta salad. I think I've shared this before on the channel. I will link the recipe that I kind of loosely followed in the description box below. I more just used up what I had on hand. So here's what I'm going to use. First, I've got some leftover cooked pasta from last night. I have a little bit of homemade ranch dressing. And then I had some of the black bean corn salsa left over from the Santa Fe tilapia I made last week. I'll link that um, in the description box below for you. I've got some green onions, a red bell pepper that was a little on the sketchy side, definitely needed to be used. I've got some little grape tomatoes, some shredded cheddar cheese, and then some taco seasoning. So what I did was I mixed the ranch dressing and taco seasoning together, and then I added everything else to a bowl, added the dressing, gave it a toss. I'm going to pop this into the fridge until we're ready for it for dinner. All right, here's the bacon I'm gonna use in case you missed my grocery haul. I got this a couple weeks ago at Kroger. Um, it was originally like $9.99, and as you can see, it was marked down to $3.60, which is a great deal for super thick bacon like this. Um, so I put it in my freezer. I just pulled it out and let it thaw. I'm gonna cook this up in the oven. I just lay it out on a cookie sheet. Sometimes I use a wire rack, sometimes I don't. Honestly, it just depends on if I feel like cleaning it that day or not. But I lay the bacon out, pop it into the cold oven, turn the oven on to 400 degrees and then just allow the bacon to cook for maybe 15 to 20 minutes until it's crisp to our liking and then I like to let it drain on some paper towels. So here's what I'm going to use for the BLTs. I've got some bread, just use your favorite, some mayonnaise, tomatoes, and these are fresh homegrown tomatoes. They were so delicious. I've got some lettuce, and then I know I've mentioned this before, but when I do BLTs, I love adding just a little bit of barbecue sauce with the mayonnaise. Not a lot, just a little bit. That might sound a little odd, but I love the sweetness and the smokiness that the barbecue sauce does. And I've eaten barbecue sauce on my BLT since I was a little girl. I love it that way. It's so good. All right, so here's a picture of my plate. Um, Gary ate later than I did. He was at Crab this night. I've got the BLT, some of the pasta salad, and some cantaloupe I had in the fridge we needed to use up. And then here's a picture of Gary's plate. And these BLTs were bomb. They were so, so good. For dinner the next night, I made rosemary ranch chicken. This is from the plain chicken. I'll have the recipe linked down below. I've made it a few times before, but it's been a while and I don't know why. This is so good. Now, I will admit the first time I made this, I kind of wasn't sure about the combination of ingredients in the marinade, but just go with the process. This chicken is delicious. It's so good. So I like to do this in a little measuring cup. You can do it in a bowl. I'm going to add in some olive oil. Next, I'm going to add in some ranch dressing. You can use your favorite bottled. This is just, I call it some my homemade it's the hidden valley ranch packet mixed uh, with mayonnaise and milk according to the package instructions once i've added the ranch i'm going to add in the worcestershire sauce as well as the salt Next, I'm going to add in some lemon juice. I happen to have a fresh lemon on hand today, but i've used the bottled stuff in the past plenty of times turns out just fine 
Next, I'm going to add in some just plain white vinegar, then the pepper. Then we're gonna add just a little bit of sugar, not a lot at all. You could do a sugar substitute here if you would like. This doesn't make it sweet at all. It just kind of counters the saltiness of the Worcestershire sauce and then the acidity from the vinegar and lemon juice. So once I've added the sugar, next we're going to add the rosemary. Of course, we need rosemary for our rosemary ranch chicken. The recipe calls for dried, which you can totally use, but I happen to have some fresh rosemary that I really need to work through. So I'm gonna chop that up, whisk that, and then I added the marinade along with some thinly sliced chicken breast to a Ziploc bag. I'm going to place this into the refrigerator. I allowed it to marinate all day. I, mar I started it in the morning, um, but you can let it marinate for a couple hours or up to overnight. Here I've got the finished chicken. I grilled it on our outdoor grill. You can bake it, you can saute it in a skillet, cook it in the air fryer, it doesn't really matter. Just make sure you cook it until it's at least 165 degrees internal temperature and then allow it to rest for about five to 10 minutes before you serve it. For one of the sides, I need some shredded cheese. So I am going to shred up this Gouda. I got this on Markdown at Kroger. Um, I am just going to use this little shredder I love. I used to avoid shredding cheese at home because I hated the box graters. Um, I just felt like it took forever. I lost my knuckles a couple times. Uh, but this little shredder is awesome. I love it so much. I have it linked in my description box below if you want to take a look, but there's different brands and stuff like that, but these are great. You can do all kinds of cheeses, vegetables, all kinds of things. Now, I've seen this creamy Borzen one pot orzo pasta all over Pinterest, YouTube, Instagram, and I've been wanting to make it, but like I mentioned before when I did the Borzen pasta, Borzen's a little on the pricey side, but I saw this Borzen on Markdown. Though This is the shallot and chive flavor. Saw it on Markdown at Kroger a week or so ago, and I was like, yes, I've been wanting to make this. Perfect time. So I am going to make this. I use Diane Morsey's recipe from Instagram. I'll have it linked down in the description box below for you. I've got a nine by nine casserole dish. I sprayed with cooking spray. I added the block of borzen to the middle, then added some dried orzo pasta along the um, borzen. Next, I'm gonna add my sun-dried tomatoes. These are just packaged julian cuts. A lot of the recipes I saw said to use the ones in oil and use some of the oil from the jar, but I had these. So I'm gonna make up the oil part with some olive oil. I just happened to have some basil flavored olive oil on hand. thought that would be good in this. So I'm gonna add that. Next, I'm going to add some chicken broth. Now, this is just um, water with chicken bouillon powder. You could use vegetable stock if you prefer to keep this vegetarian. Next, I'm going to add in some minced garlic. Now, for the seasonings. Really, you could use whatever seasonings you prefer. I'm going to do some red pepper flakes, dried basil, dried oregano, and a little salt and pepper. Now, a quick note, I did have the recipe from Diane for everything but the borzen. I used the, just like one block of borzen, like the recipe said, but I halved everything else, if that makes sense. So once I've added the seasonings, you're going to cover this tightly with foil, and you really want to make sure you do this tightly. The steam that's created from it being covered with foil is what's going to cook your orzo. So I'll put this into a preheated 425 degree oven. The recipe said to cook this for about 12 minutes. I kind of doubted that, um, but I, I went with it. After the 12 minutes, I pulled it out. As you can see here, there's a lot of liquid left. I gave um, the orzo a taste, and it was still pretty raw. Um, so I'm going to put this back into the oven again, covered, and I cooked it for another 10 minutes. So I'll say the first cook was about 20 minutes total. And I did also want to thank one of you subscribers. I can't remember her name, but when I mentioned that I was making this on my grocery haul, she commented and said that she had to cook it longer. Um, so I, I appreciate that tip. It, it was right on. So as you can see, all of the liquid has been absorbed. I tasted the orzo, it was cooked to my liking. So you wanna give this a stir, and as you can see, that orzo just melts away. Next, we're gonna add in some fresh spinach. And then I felt like this was just a little bit tight for me, um, and so I didn't have any more broth out at this moment. I just added in just a tiny little bit of cream just to loosen it up a little bit. 
And then we're going to add in our shredded cheese. Again, I shredded up that Gouda you saw just a minute ago. Just use whatever cheese you prefer. We're going to cover this with foil and then pop this back into the oven for about five to eight minutes. All you're doing right now really is allowing the spinach to wilt and the cheese to melt. This is what it looked like when it was done. And y'all, this was delicious. This was so, so good. For the other side, I'm just going to do some simple roasted asparagus. I've got some asparagus that I washed and trimmed. I've got it on this baking sheet. I'm going to drizzle it with some olive oil. And then for the seasoning, use whatever seasonings you prefer. I'm going to use this Auntie Nona's Everything Seasoning. It's called Everything Seasoning, not like everything but the bagel seasoning, but because it's good on everything. It's got like salt, pepper, garlic, onion. It's just a really good seasoning. I do have a discount code for Auntie Nona's seasonings in case you're interested. It'll be linked in the description box below. But I gave that a toss and then I baked the asparagus alongside the borzen for just about 12 minutes or so until it was tender. And here's a picture of our plates. This dinner was so, so good. That chicken has so much flavor. The borzen orzo was delicious. The asparagus was yummy. Just such a good dinner. For dinner the next night, I didn't get a picture, but we just had leftovers. We had leftover sandwiches from lunch we'd had that day, and then some of the leftover boars and pasta. For dinner the next night, I made steak pad thai. Now, I've been making this for years. Let me disclose this by saying this is not an authentic pad thai. It's not. This came from a home chef order that we did years and years ago. Um, but this is a really quick and easy dinner to put together. It also doesn't require a lot of, um, like, specific ingredients that you may have to go to an Asian supermarket to get to make an authentic pad thai. So not authentic, but if you're looking for a quick and easy dinner, I definitely recommend you give this a try. I've shared how I make this before on my channel. I'll link that video down below. Here's the finished pad thai. Basically what you do is cook up some rice noodles, reserve the pasta water, drain it, and then in a large skillet or wok, you're gonna saute up some steak strips. You could also use whatever protein you'd like. Add a little sugar to the steak strips. Once they're almost done, you add in some scallions, matchstick carrots. Once those are tender, you are going to add in um, some of the pasta water, oyster sauce, lime juice, and some ball. Once that has all come together, you just garnish it with some crushed up roasted peanuts. Now, this Home Chef recipe says to use honey roasted peanuts, and I like doing that. It gives a good sweetness to the dish. And then we're also going to garnish it with some cilantro, green onions, and lime wedges. And like I said, maybe not authentic, but this takes less than 30 minutes start to finish to put together, and it's yummy. For dinner the next night, I didn't really feel like cooking, but I wanted like a steak sandwich. Gary was at the gym this night, but there was a subway near him, so he offered to pick us up sandwiches on his way home, which I was grateful for. I did find a coupon in the app for buy one sandwich at full price, get one half off. So we both got their steak and cheese. Now, I, I've mentioned this before, but when we get sandwiches, my husband and I are polar opposites. Like I tend to get things very, very simple. He tends to get like everything you can possibly get. But tonight he wanted to go my route and get things a little more simple. So um, we did steak and cheese. Like I said, I got mine on just the regular bread. And then we did, or I did on mine, American cheese, the steak, and then some spinach, tomato, and their Baja Chipotle sauce. For Gary, we did the Italian urban cheese, the steak pepper jack cheese, and then he got, I think, green peppers, and um, I think that's the only vegetable, and then the Baja Chipotle. And then once he brought that home, I grabbed some chips from the pantry, grabbed a pickle, and that was our dinner this night. And I'm going to go off on a little tangent here. <laughs> I'm sorry, but like I know people talk about like inflation and things aren't like what they used to be and everything, and I do find that's true for some things. Um... But I really am noticing it with Subway. The last few times we've gotten Subway, like, number one, it is not as good as it used to be to me, anyway, and to Gary. Gary used to love Subway. That boy could eat Subway sandwiches, used to, uh, like, three meals a day, seven days a week, and never get sick of it. But the last few times we went, it just, it hasn't been as good. They've changed a lot of their sauces. This Baja Chipotle is not like the Southwest Chipotle or the Chipotle Southwest that they used to have. 
And then it's like they're so skimpy with the meat and the cheese. I mean, on our sandwiches, I got uh, double the meat. And I'm glad I did because doubling the meat, honestly, guys, that was the same amount of meat that used to come on just the sandwich regularly. Um, so anyway, and then th just the two sandwiches. And like I said, it was buy one, get one half off. We're like 24 bucks. I'm like, what in the world? <laughs> so I'm glad we didn't buy like drinks and chips and everything there. Cause I mean, I already had it at home, but anyway, there's my tangent for the day. So at like least that we used to love Subway. It's just not as great. Now I will say though, um, back several months ago, I did copycat Subway breakfast sandwiches and I made like a copycat Southwest Chipotle sauce. And y'all, I'll link that video down below. Those are delicious. So good. That copycat sauce recipe is like spot on to what their Southwest Chipotle sauce used to be. So if you were a fan of that sauce and sad like us that they took it away, go check out that video. Make that sauce. It's really, really good. But anyway, tangent over. That was our dinner this night. All right, so the last dinner in this week's video was actually kind of like a special request from Gary or a suggestion from him. I made salmon, I don't know, like a couple weeks or so ago. And he was like, hey, remember that dill sauce you used to make? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, I think that would be really good with salmon. And so I was like, hey, I can do that. So I'm going to start out, though, by putting together one of the side dishes. The other day I was at Food Lion. I, honestly, I was just killing time roaming around, seeing what I could see. And I saw this couscous cucumber cucumber <laughs> salad from Suddenly Salad. I hadn't seen it before and I've been wanting to try couscous so I thought I would give it a whirl. So I'm just going to cook this up according to the package instructions and on the back here you can see it gives you a, like suggestions of vegetables to add in and I've got those on hand so I'm just going to again cook it up according to the package instructions, make the vinaigrette, add in the veggies and the feta cheese and then pop that in the fridge until I'm ready for it for dinner. I'm also going to go ahead and make the dill sauce and let it hang out in the fridge until dinner as well. Now, this dill sauce actually came from an all recipes like tilapia recipe that I found years and years ago, and I've been making it for many years. I'll link that down below. Um, but like Gary said, he thought it would be good on the salmon, and it was. It was really good. So in this bowl, I'm going to add in some sour cream. I've also made this many times using um, like plain Greek yogurt. Turns out well. I'm going to add in some mayonnaise. And I'm just eyeballing the amounts here. I'm adding in some garlic powder, dried dill. The recipe calls for fresh dill, but I didn't have any on hand and I didn't want to buy a whole bunch just for this little bit of sauce. So I'm using dill and then some salt and pepper and then lemon juice. Now I'm using fresh, that's what I've got on hand. You can use the stuff in the bottle. We're gonna give that a really good mix, give it a taste, adjust the seasonings to your taste, and then that's it. You can eat this right away. Like I said earlier, I like to pop it in the fridge for at least a couple hours just to let the flavors come together. All right, now for the salmon, I've got some salmon fillets. I've already seasoned the first side. On the second side, I'm adding some olive oil, a little bit of garlic powder, and then I'm using some lemon pepper. And that's it for the seasonings. Use whatever seasonings you prefer. Now you can saute this in a skillet over the stove. You can bake this in the oven. I'm gonna do this in the air fryer tonight. Just did 400 degrees. These weren't super thick pieces of salmon, so I think I cooked these for like six or seven minutes or so. Just cook them until they're done to your liking. For the other side, I'm just doing some quick zucchini. I just sliced these into half moons. I'm going to add them to a bowl, drizzle them with some olive oil, and then again with the seasonings, just like I say all the time, use whatever seasonings you like. I'm doing the anti no -Nos Everything seasoning. I'm going to give that a really good toss, and then I pop these in the air fryer at 400 degrees, and I believe I cook these for about maybe six or seven minutes or so, just until they were slightly golden brown and tender. Here are the finished plates. So we've got that zucchini, the salmon. I drizzled a little bit of that sauce over top of it and then served a little more on the side along with a lemon wedge and then that couscous salad. This dinner was so good. That lemon pepper salmon with that creamy dill sauce was yummy and that couscous salad both Gary and I really enjoyed that all right that is it for this week's video thank you so much for watching I hope you liked this video hope you got some dinner ideas from it if you did hit the thumbs up button below and subscribe to my channel if you're not already I hope you have a great rest of the day thanks so much for watching Bye bye